Today's short lesson is subtracting fractions in word problems. This video is kind of like the sequel, the part two to the video that you did yesterday, which was adding fractions in word problems. Today's video is going to be very similar. Just the only thing that's going to be different is you're going to be subtracting the word problems. All right, let's get started. As always, let's review our vocabulary. Unlike denominators are denominators that have different numbers, so like one-eighth and one-fourth. Factors are numbers that can be multiplied together to make bigger numbers. Multiples are numbers that can be divided without any remainder. An equivalent fraction is a fraction that maybe look different, but has the same value, like one-fourth and two-eighths. And simplifying is when you get the smallest form of the number possible. All right, let's get started. When Vivian had one cat, she needed to serve one sixth of cat, one sixth of a can of cat food each day. Now that Vivian Vivian has adopted a second cat, she needs to serve a total of two thirds of a can each day. How much extra food is needed to feed the second cat? So we know that. First of all, the important information in this is that first she had one six, now she has two thirds, and she wants to know how much more she is using after the fact that she has two more cats, or one more cat. So, I know that two thirds minus one six is going to give me my answer. The first step that I always do when I have unlike denominators is I check to see if the smaller fraction is a factor of the bigger fraction. So is three a factor of six? Why yes, yes it is. I know that three times two will give me six. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. I'm gonna make my new equivalent fraction down here. Three times two will give me a denominator of six and two times two will give me a numerator of four. So let's look at these fractions. Four six minus my original one six. Four six minus one six gives me three six. And I already know what you're thinking. Three six can be simplified. I know that if I divide three by three and six by three, I will get my simplified version of my fraction. Three divided by three will give me one, and six divided by three will give me two. So she is feeding her cat a half of a can more than she used to. All right, so here is our little summary of what we just did. To find out how much food she need, is feeding the cat more, she wants to subtract two-thirds minus one-sixth. We knew that we could use six as a common denominator because three was a factor of six. So we multiplied those twos by the top and the bottom to make our new equivalent fraction of four-sixths. Then we moved on to subtract the fractions. Four-sixths minus one-sixths equals three-sixths. But we knew, because we're smarties, we knew that that answer could be simplified. We divided 3 6 by 3 on the top and the bottom to give us the correct answer of 1 half. We're so smart. All right, let's do another one. I'll pull out the important information with you. And just like yesterday, I'm going to be a little stinker, and I'm going to change the problem on you. Book, Brooke's chemistry textbook weighs five six of a pound, and her geometry textbook weighs one half of a pound. How much more does the chemistry textbook weigh than the geometry textbook? I am going to change this one half to a one fourth. So now I'm pulling out my important information. I know that the bigger one weighs five six, and the smaller one weighs one half. I need to know how much more. So I am going to have to do 5, 6 minus 1 fourth. Okay, pause the video, try to solve this problem, see what you get. I'll meet you back in a few. All 
All right, so hopefully you've paused the video by now. You have solved your problem. Our first step is always to look at the two denominators and say to ourselves, is one of those denominators a factor of the other? Well, looking at six and four, I know that there's nothing that I can multiply four by to give me an answer of six. So they are not factors of each other. What I do know is that I can multiply these denominators by each other. When I do what something to the bottom, I always have to do the same thing to the top. So now after I do these multiplication steps, I will get two new fractions. Six times four and four times six, well that's the same thing. It gives me an answer of 24. Five times four is 20. And one times six is 12. 20 minus 12 gives me eight. And I don't subtract the denominators. So 24 remains our denominator. Let's see if you caught on because I can simplify this fraction. So if I'm thinking about my multiplication facts, I'm thinking of what two or what number can I divide both of these numbers, 8 and 24, by to get me the lowest common denominator? Well, these are pretty big numbers. So let's pull them off to the side and we'll think of the factors. Okay, well, some factors of 8 are 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. Factors of 24 are 1 times 24, 2 times 24, and 3 times 8, and also 4 times 6. Okay, so I'm looking at my factors here. I'm going to try to see which ones they have in common. So I can see that they have a 1 in common, a 2 in common, a 4 in common and an 8 in common. So out of 1, 2, 4, and 8, the greatest common factor is the 8. So I'm going to cross out all the other facts that don't have the 8 in it. Okay, and then I can see that these two 8s knock each other out. So what I'm left with is 1 and 3. So my new fraction, my simplified fraction of 8 24ths, is one third. All right, this last one you're gonna do on your own. I'm gonna pull out the important information with you and then you're going to solve it on the next page. Jason ran one half of a mile and walked one sixth of a mile. How much farther did Jason run than walk? So we know that he ran for longer than when he walked. So you're gonna have to subtract those two numbers. Pause the video, try to figure it out. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video. We're going to go over what you did in that last part. To find how much farther Jason ran, you had to subtract one half minus one six. If you were looking at it, you knew that two was a factor of six and that you can multiply by three in order to find equivalent fraction. So one half, you could multiply by three on the top and the bottom to get the new fraction of three sixths. And then when you put those together, you can subtract them. Three sixths minus one sixth would give you two sixths. And if you figured it out that you had to simplify, go you. Two sixths is a simplify is not a simplified fraction, so you had to divide both the top and the bottom by two in order to give you the simplified answer of one-third. So the answer to the question was that Jason ran one-third of a mile farther than when he walked. Great job. All right, my friends, this is the point in time where you have to show what you know. Go to the quiz on Canvas. And remember to use your notes and take your time. Good luck.